All right, here we go. So this is our team. So I'm your rep as well as I do all the training, all the support. So I'm your single point of contact. The rest of these people are awesome. Uh, Sarah's with us today. Hello. And here we go. Hi, Sarah. Um, Hopefully you're aware of our product lineup. We're a lot more than just VEX. VEX is our number one product. We are the exclusive educational reseller for Canada for VEX Robotics. So that is our primary product, but we also have 3D printers, laser cutters, software, et cetera. So anything you're looking for in the STEM way, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Okay, sounds good. I know that we use um, a lot of Ozobots and 3D printers and, um, yeah, so we have a lot of that stuff in our schools already. Yes, that's right. I'm pretty sure you have the Athenia 3D printers from us out there and mm -hmm. those are yep. so excellent. So the agenda hasn't changed, but the content has. So we'll just dive right in. So we're well aware that COVID-19 has changed the way the world works, especially when it comes to automation and remote work. Uh, there is a big push to get more to, uh, we call it machine work, but whether it's automation or whether it's just platforms where like uh, Zoom, like we're using now, things are getting a lot more technical, a lot more automated, and we need people to manage those types of technologies. So why robotics? Uh, when I first started at iDesign, one of the things that intrigued me was I was doing research and I read a report that said 65% of elementary school students will have a career that does not exist yet. And that was really interesting. And when you think about it, I mean, 10 years ago, nobody was saying, I want to be a drone technician, you know, or I want to be a social media guru. Like I still find it hard to believe that there are people whose full-time job is Facebook but it's really unique. And the same comes for robotics and things like that. So how do we prepare kids or students for jobs that don't exist? And we do that by teaching them 21st century skills. So we can't teach them the skills for that specific career because it doesn't exist, but we can teach them global skills that will help them in any career. Oh, it looks like we have uh, Louise in the waiting room. Oh, yeah. So she's my coworker. Ah. Hi, Louise. How are you today? You may be in other meetings, so that's okay if you don't unmute. That's all right. You just missed all the dry stuff. You came in at the perfect time. So we're going to talk about Vex Robotics. So why is Vex Robotics so successful? Why is it our number one product? And the reason for that is it is a turnkey solution. So of course you get all the hardware, you get all the pieces, all the kits, everything comes in these great kits where you're able to do some amazing things with robotics, coding, etc. But it also comes with software. And what I love about Vex is they've switched to a new platform called Vex Code. And it doesn't matter which one of our products you open up the VEX code for. The only real difference is up in the left corners for this one, it's VEX IQ, but it'll say one, two, three, or go, or IQ, or V5. The rest of it all looks and works exactly the same. Now, as students progress, so as they start getting into VEX IQ and VEX V5, obviously there's going to be some more blocks or more commands that they can work with, but the coding platform stays the same, which is great for students because as they're progressing through the grades, they never need to learn about a new platform, everything, they say, oh, I already know this, click, 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 and they're off encoding. It just gets more advanced. It's also helpful for teachers because we know that teachers get bounced around a lot. So they might be working with VEX Go one year and the next year VEX IQ, or they might move on to high school. For them as well, it's the same platform, so they don't have to relearn as well. VEX also has what they call STEM labs, which are lesson plans, and they have lesson plans for every single product, which is fantastic. So that means you don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel. You can simply open up the lesson plans, take a look, and pick and choose the ones that you want to use, and you're ready to go. We have free VEX certifications. So these are designed as educator cert certificates. So as a teacher, if you're teaching VEX IQ, you can go through the certification process. It's completely free of charge. It's a self-study. So you do the different modules and then write the exam and you can become certified. We also do have students doing it because as I mentioned, it is free of charge. So if you have those students that are really keen and really want to learn, it's a great way for them to just dive in as well. 
brand new, Vex just came up with something called PD Plus. So what they built is they built a portal for teachers where you can uh, sign up. There is a cost associated with it and it gives you uh, an entire uh, buffet of learning opportunities. So there's things like the annual Vex conference, there's the Distinguished Educators Program, there's lessons, there's a community where you can ask questions and actually interact with the VEX team, etc. So this is a great uh, resource for teachers that prefer self-study, that don't necessarily want to take a training course, or you just want to have all those resources at the tips of your fingers. It's also great for uh, board, uh, school board, uh, so if you're, you know, STEM or technology at the school board level, it's a great resource to have because you can work as a buffer between VEX and the teachers and get them information they need. The one thing they do mention is it's not designed where you're able to share it. So it is designed where you're actually supposed to purchase VEX PD for each and every teacher. We've got some, we've got one new product added now. So VEX uh, does have a complete pre-K to university uh, product offering, you'll notice a new block called VEX EXP, and that's something that just came out a few weeks ago. So very exciting, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, before I go through all the products, do you have any questions? Uh, not so far. All right. So VEX123 uh, is really great. I actually just got mine last week. I've been playing with it and having a ton of fun. And the idea with this is it's kindergarten to grade two where students can start coding without a screen. So you can take this puck and you can literally just right on the top, uh, forward, 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 turn, etc. And one of the questions that was asked that I couldn't answer in the previous webinars is how do we teach students about units? And what's great about this is these kits, let me see if I can find a slide. You notice up in the top right corner, there's the little field. The field actually has squares. So if you sit this robot in the middle of a square with the arrow lined up and you say forward, 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 it'll actually go forward three squares. So it's a great way to get students started with coding without a screen. Very, very simple. And it's a lot of fun. Then the next step is the VEX physical coder, which I have here. So it looks like a tablet, but it's not electronic. You actually get uh, little okay. cards that you can use that just slide in. And then it's a matter of pressing the run button and it will execute the code. So again, you're teaching the kids about block coding, but you don't need to bring in devices. You don't need iPads, computers, etc. Like all the VEX product lineups, it also can be coded using VEX code. So you can use tablets, computers, etc. connect to the one, two, three, and do coding that way as well. So again, very, very versatile. You've got the three different methods of coding. Uh, one other thing I should mention is it comes with this cool little ring, which just snaps on the robot. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to attach things. So paper, pipe cleaners, things like that, and really have fun. So there's one exercise where the students can basically make a parade. So they can decorate them as parade floats and then form a parade where they're going to go through, et cetera. So you could do Halloween, Christmas, you know, you could have your little Santa robot going around, et cetera. Is the, um, sorry, do you mind if I ask a question? No, of course. <laughs> is the, um, when using the screen, is it through an app? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you're using the screen, it's through an app. So for uh, Android and uh, iPad, you download it for the computer. It's actually a website. Okay. So you just go to a website and it actually works incredibly well. It connects no problem and you're off and running. So it does come with these field tiles. And now that I've got the VEX123, I understand why these field tiles are different from all the others and why they have the little squares, because that's the unit that students can use. So regardless of what configuration, students can actually go and count, you know, one, two, three, four, how many squares they want to move. And now that's their unit of how many they want to move forward. All right, um, these kits do come in bundles and they come with great classroom storage solutions. So we understand that this isn't a product that necessarily every school is gonna dive in for every classroom. So this makes it really easy to keep it portable, move it from classroom to classroom, library to library, maker spaces, et cetera, move it all around and still have great success. So it comes with the storage in bundles, uh, with the robot cases, the chargers and everything. Next, we're going to talk about VEX Go. So this, are, are you familiar with the VEX IQ platform at all? 
Uh, mm -hmm. Not a lot, a little bit. I know my coworker he is here. She probably has a little bit more experience, but. Right. So Vexed IQ Robotics came out in 2013. And the idea was we needed to get students started at a younger age with robotics. And it was targeted at grades five to eight. Uh, there were teachers that started bringing it down into grades three or four. The problem with Vex IQ, and it's not really a problem, but the robots take quite a while to build. So when I'm doing, say, a teacher training, um, to build a robot can take an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, the students usually do it a little bit quicker. But for younger students, grade three to five, it's too long. It takes too long to build, and it's difficult for them. So VexGo was brought out where students can actually build a robot in minutes. So the idea is that they can build a robot that can be coded in uh, 12 to 15 minutes. They can actually, you can do your coding with them. And it's actually designed that you could actually run a class in your 40 minute period and have everything back in the box ready to go. So you can do it as individual lessons, et cetera. And it's completely lesson based. So there's lessons for all the different, uh, the STEM lab lessons for all the different types of um, subjects and I'll go into that a little bit later. What's also great about these is these new jewel cases that VEX has brought out. As you can see, everything has its place. The parts are all color coded. So it's easy for the students to find the parts, but it's even easier for the teachers at the end of the day to make sure everything's back where it belongs. So again, great organization. As you can see, everything has its place. And if you take parts out, it actually shows you underneath. There's a cardboard inlay underneath the insert that actually tells you like what part is missing. So it'll show you an orange block, et cetera. So it's really easy to know, oh, we're missing an orange block. Oh, there it is. And in it goes. So again, very, very well done. Again, they are available in bundles. One of the great things VEX has done, VEX did an amazing job of listening because there are, with any product, there's always pain points. And we always listen to the teachers and see what kind of issues they're having. And what VEX decided is with every one of their classroom bundles, they're gonna include an extra tote with spare parts because things do get lost, things do get broken. So rather than us working with teachers every year and then making up a list and they've got the spare parts right from the get-go. So if you do need something, if something's missing, if something you know, gets lost, you've got the parts to, to be able to just say, yep, here we go. And your lessons are gonna continue. VEX is more about just then, sorry, <laughs> VEX is about so much more than just robotics. So for instance, with the VEXCO STEM labs, I mentioned that there's different subjects. So there's things like fun frogs, where the students will actually investigate the different phases of a frog life cycle. So they'll actually use the parts to build a tadpole. And once again, these lessons are step by step, just a lot like Lego. Uh, I don't know if you played with Lego when you were younger. I was a big Lego fan. And the instructions are great, much better than the IKEA instructions. <laughs> and the students can build, you know, a tadpole, and then it goes through adding the legs, et cetera, turning it into a frog. So for the, especially for VEX 1, 2, 3, and Go, it's not just a robotics or a coding thing. It can be brought in the classroom to teach various different subjects. There is also, and this is new, the VEX Go Challenge. So VEX, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, VEX got started with competitive robotics. The idea was the competition, the competition, the competition. And I've been to so many competitions, and we love them because of the engagement. There's no better way to get students engaged than going to a competition. Now, as a coach and with you being educators, even before COVID, there's always that giving up that extra time. You've got to either, if it's during the day, you've got to get a substitute, you've got to get a bus, or if it's on weekends, you've got to get parents to drive, you've got to give up your time. So for these younger grades, VEXCO brought out classroom challenges. So what you do is you do these challenges right in your classroom and you just submit the results so your students can kill, still compete, whether you do it board wide or whether they're competing on a global scale, they still get to compete. They can go on YouTube, see what other schools are doing, et cetera. Um, but it's in the classroom during classroom time. So you don't have to worry about any extra expenses or giving up your own personal time. VEX has also made, uh, this is the VEX Go uh, competition field. And it's really unique. It's a kit that's meant to be reused over and over and over. So for the VEX competition for IQ and V5, you need to purchase a new competition every year because they change it. But for VEXCO, what they've decided is because your students will be rolling through it and there's four different competitions, they're gonna leave this the same. So you buy this kit once and you are now set. So this one here is uh, a space one where the students have different challenges. And you can see there are a number of different challenges the students need to work through. 
Uh, we do have another one. So this one's village engineering construction. So you can see here that they've basically got to help build a village and you can see the different tasks and the points associated. You know, things like lowering the bridge so the robot can cross, they get five points. So this is something where uh, it's not really designed where the students are going to be able to do everything, but they can pick and choose or you can break them up into groups and they can work with robots to do the different tasks. So again, really great engagement and lots of fun and also real world. VEX is really good on bringing real world problems to the students so they can get a glimpse of what it's like to make a difference. Before we go to VEX IQ, I'm just going to grab a drink of water. Are there any questions? Uh, no, not so far. All right. So Louise, this is either going to make you happy or this is going <laughs> to make you frustrated because VEX just brought out VEX V2. So we've all loved the VEX IQ. Again, it came out in 2013, so it was due for an update. What is great about it is uh, the new V2 is fully compatible. So I'll get to that in a minute. The VEX IQ construction system is a lot like the VEX GO, where it's plastic pieces that the students snap together. The VEX IQ, it's a little harder to put the pieces together and take them apart because it is designed for competition and it is designed for engineering, where students can really build some great uh, feats of engineering and it will stay together. Uh, I was really amazed uh, after seeing Lego competitions and watching robots fall apart on the field, which was par for the course, I was really amazed to go to VEX events and see how well these robots stood up. The other amazing thing about VEX IQ is that the controller comes pre-programmed right out of the box, which means that whatever the students build, they can test. So no matter what creation they build, as long as they plug the motors uh, and sensors into the right ports, they can pick up that controller and they can drive their robot around, they can test all their mechanisms. So they know right away whether or not the robot works. And once they get to the coding portion of it, there's no question about is it the robot or is it the code? They know the robot will do it. They can drive the robot around, see how it looks and then code it to do the exact same thing. The new VEX kits finally, like I say, VEX Listen comes with organized storage. So Catherine, if you're not familiar with the old VEX IQ kits, picture all these parts in a Rubbermaid tote uh -huh. with, a, with a tray. And teachers would say to me, where does this stuff go? And the answer was, wherever you like it to go. There was no <laughs> real organization and everything didn't fit in, in a perfect way. I never had a teacher say, hey, look at this, this is perfect. Now they come again in these storage cases where everything fits in its own place. So a great improvement there. Um, there were some other improvements to the VEX V2. The brain is a little bit more powerful and big improvements to the battery. But as I mentioned, all the parts are interchangeable. So you can use the old brain with a new battery, the new brain with an old battery, mix and match. So it's, it's, we're not at a point where any of the kits need to be updated. All the kits out there are still relevant. They still work. There's no advantage to having the new ones, except that the new batteries will last a little bit longer. And of course, the storage organization is a lot better. They also came out with these bundles, which are fantastic. So we didn't have these. We You could buy VEX bundles before, but they just basically sent you a whole bunch of totes. So now we've got it organized again. Um, where it does come with the pizza bag or the, the hot food <laughs> delivery bag for the field. Everything packs up. And they also brought out these carts. So these carts are now for the VEX Go, the VEX IQ, and the new VEX EXP, where now you can take your entire classroom storage, put it on a cart, and... Oh, sorry, let me mute my phone. I apologize. Put it on a cart and now you have the ability to store it, wheel it around, etc. Any questions about the new VEX IQ? No. All right. I like all the packaging for everything. It looks so nice and tidy so and organized. I mean, I was a VEX coach for seven years doing VEX IQ. And one of the hardest things was organizing the kits and knowing what came from what kit, et cetera. Mm. You know, we would spend days at the end of the season trying to sort things out. And with these new kits, now it's, again, just lo open it up, put in what's missing, and you're good to go. And again, they do come with, uh, I believe they still come with a bundle of spare parts as well. Uh, another thing, Louise, I don't know if you know, if you've got VEX IQ coaches, one of the new things VEX came out with last year was the pin tool or the pin pliers. 
So trying to get those pins out of the VEX IQ sometimes was really hard. Um, I made the mistake of thinking needle nose pliers was a good solution until I gave them to a group of uh, grade sevens and that did not work out well. So they're nice plastic pliers. There's nothing sharp. They can't pinch, but it does make it really easy to get the pins in and out. And they are available separately and in 10 packs. That's my sales pitch for the day. <laughs> All right. So VEX IQ, uh, the new challenge is VEX IQ pitching in. So that's this year's challenge where basically they're uh, soft foam balls, uh, you know, the fabric around them. And I know it's hard to see, but the goal is to either push the balls or move the balls inside the center area or shoot them up into the basket in the top. So again, this is a global challenge being played all over. Uh, due to COVID, it's interesting to see what's happening. I haven't seen any events in Ottawa yet. I don't know if you run any events directly in your schools. And we're currently talking with Skills Ontario to see if uh, we will be running in person for that this year. Uh, VEX is also, of course, used for classroom learning, summer camps, after school programs, et cetera. Richard uh, Sternichuk is the one who runs most of the events in Ottawa. That's right. And yes. most of our students like would be exposed in, in Ontario skills. Obviously last year was exceptional and the year prior as well. Right, yeah. yes, exactly. So again, it's kind of a wait and see. Um, it has been a good experience for a lot of teachers who have decided that they've got the kits, so let's bring it into the classroom. So one of the great things about VEX IQ is there's so many different things you can build. So the VEX IQs come in a super kit, which means it's not just a kit where they can build one robot. They can build all of these robots one at a time. And these are just the robots that VEX actually gives you the plans for. The students can also create their own creation for different tasks. This is a brand new product. So this is VEX EXP, and this is designed uh, for high school classroom. So the VEX V5 is a great product, but when you build a VEX V5 robot, let me grab mine here, they're quite large. So this is a big robot. Uh, it measures almost 18 inches by 18 inches. So one of the biggest challenges for high school teachers was finding enough space. Uh, also the VEX V5 field is 12 feet by 12 feet. So getting that kind of real estate in a classroom can be quite a struggle. So what VEX did is they came up with basically, this is a scaled down version of the V5. And it's an all metal robot. The motors are half size, half power. The brain has half the number of ports. It still has the controller. But the idea is that they're learning all the same concepts, but in a classroom scale, whereas the V5 was designed for competition. Those motors are very powerful. The robots are very fast. So this is a scaled down version. And of course, like all the VEX products, Students can build their creation, plug it all in, drive it around before they get to coding. Uh, one of the great advantages of this as well is they brought out wireless programming. So you're not plugging, unplugging your robot all the time. You can actually just connect your, con your controller to your computer and then use the link between the controller and the robot to send all of the code back and forth. So this is a great solution if you wanna bring engineering, coding, et cetera, into the high schools. Again, you're starting to see a trend here. VEX really got it. We've got the organized storage. And of course it does come in bundles. And what we have here is VEX now supplies a four foot by four foot field rather than a 12 foot by 12 foot field, much more manageable. And these fields are portable. You can just grab this field, pick it up, carry it from room to room, slide it in the closet, or it does break down into the fast food delivery bag. Of course they do have the carts as well. Uh, now we're going to talk about the V5. So the V5 has not changed. The V5 now is primarily for competition. So VEX is trying to split it saying, if you're doing classroom only, use the VEX EXP. If you're going to be competing in the competitions, the VEX V5 is not being replaced. It's not that old. I think it's only two years old. Uh, so it will be continuing along as their premium product and the only product legal for competitions. Uh, they do not have good storage solutions for it. Uh, as your teachers will definitely tell you. Uh, this year, the VEX Robotics Competition event is called Tipping Point, which is kind of unique. Uh, it's hard to see, but the little purple discs are actually uh, rings, like a donut, and then the yellow, blue, and red are uh, bases 
that the robots can either stack rings on or move around. But the reason it's called tipping point is on either side, you'll see the red and the blue, those are actually teeter-totters. And at the end of the event, the robots have to balance on those teeter-totters. Of course, VEX is all about the championships. We're told that the championships this year will be in person. Um, <laughs> I'm Fingers not holding crossed. my breath. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, especially since they are run in the United States. Uh, but we'll just have to play it by ear and see how it goes. Uh, Vex Robotics is the largest online robotics championship. Or Sorry, last year they got a record for the largest online robotics championship in the world. Uh, previous to that, they were the largest in-person robotics championship or robotics event held in the world. Uh, the remote was actually a really great thing because it really allowed a lot of countries and a lot of students that may not have got to compete before to compete. So 30 countries represented, of course, 49 states represented in the U.S. Uh, for Canada, that was really unique because we have a lot of remote teams. I work with teams uh, with robotics students. Uh, in northern Canada, uh, northern BC, uh, and some of them, I work with a school that's on an island where we literally ship the products and it goes by barge because there's no road there. So for them to compete was not possible. And last year was the first time that they actually had the opportunity to compete because everything was remote. So, you know, sometimes great things do come from challenges. And our final product is the V5 work cell. And what this is, this is a factory automation solution. So for uh, Shism or CTE, you know, where you're really preparing students for the new world like we've been talking about and automation is a big thing. This is basically a, a work cell where students can not only uh, build and test, but they can also code uh, factory automation solutions. So this one here, the piece on the end of the arm is actually a magnetic uh, electromagnet. And then the green, blue, and red round pieces are, are discs. And they can move around on conveyor belts. The arm can pick them up and sort them. You can add sensors, et cetera, and basically have a classroom desktop uh, automation solution for teaching. It comes with its own cart as well. You can see these are the old types of totes that we used to get. So the work cell still comes with those totes just because of the sheer quantity of parts it comes with. There is also a storage solution. So now this is a work cell that can actually be brought classroom to classroom with room for the laptop and everything. All right, before I dive into the software and do a quick demo, are there any questions? No questions for me. Okay. James, it's good to see you there. Hey, how are you, Dean? Fantastic. How about yourself? Uh, if I was any better, I'd be amazing, man. <laughs> you are amazing. How did your experience with your V5 robot go this summer? Did you get to there, play with it more? Oh, I, I did a little bit of playing with it for sure. And uh, I've actually got a bunch of uh, VEX kits here that we're probably going to start building in the end of October. Excellent. That's great news. Any questions from you, James, before we dive into the software? No, nope, no, I've uh, I've been real happy with the product since we went through that little glitch that we had and it just works fine. Perfect. That's great news. All right. So as I mentioned with VEX code, it doesn't matter which VEX code solution I open up there. They all have the exact same interface. It's just different commands based on what type of a robot you're interfacing with. And now's when I get to have some fun and we can go live and I can actually show you some fun stuff. Is everyone familiar with um, VexCode? Have, have all of you worked with it or is there anyone who this is brand new? Katie, is this brand new or have you seen it before? Not brand new, thank you. All right. Uh, does this work on Chrome? Yes, it does work on Chromebook now. All right, so this is VexCode. And if you're looking at this saying, I've seen something like this before, you have, it's called Scratch. So fortunately for us, Scratch is designed by MIT and they decided to make it called open source, which means they said, anybody who wants to take our software and work with it, you're welcome to do so as long as you give us credit. So Vex decided rather than reinventing the wheel, they would take something that's popular and works amazingly well, and they would bring out the VEX version of it. So getting started, it's as simple as snapping commands together. 
So it's just drag and drop. As you can see, you've got uh, different uh, groups on the side. Everything's color coded and it's really easy. Now I'm gonna use this one to simulate because this is actually VEX VR and the VR actually stands for virtual robot. So what this means is students to work with this don't even actually have to have a robot kit. They actually get this virtual robot. This virtual robot is very well done. It's got a drive base, just like all the VEX robots, so you can drive it around, but it's also packed with sensors. It's got bumper switches on the front, the little bumpers. Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. So those two little uh, blocks that say VEX, those are bumper switches. If the robot bumps into something, it can sense it. It's got a distance sensor and a front eye on the front, same on the bottom. It's got a pen that you can move up and down. So as the robot drives, it can trace its path. You can change the color of the pen. It's got a uh, built-in gyro and location, and it also has an electromagnet for manipulating objects. So to see how easy it is to get started, you can see that I just snapped two commands here together from the menu. And now if I click run, my robot is off and driving. So it's really easy to get students started. So I'm gonna take you for the full tour. Starting on the left, we have all the different languages. So we understand that some students may have English as a second language, which may be a barrier for coding. So they can choose from any of these languages. I have also worked with school districts where we've actually coded in French as part of the French curriculum to help uh, keep students engaged and give them a reason to learn French. File, we can start new projects. We can load our projects. So you can load and save, even though this is a website. There are also a number of example projects. So these are projects where if students are trying to learn something, sometimes it's easier to give them an example. This is how it works. For instance, if we're teaching them simple drivetrain moves and turns, they can click on that. And what we have here is a code with the gray boxes, which are comments. So this is teaching them driving forward, turning right, driving forward, turning left. What's great about these is students can simply hit the start button and they can run the code. And now you'll notice that as the code runs, it's actually highlighted which block is running. And that gives students an idea of how the code works. And now they can come in here and start making changes and really getting a great understanding. There's also built-in tutorials. And that these are tutorials that will teach them the basics. And what's great about these, we'll take driving forward and backwards again. So if you're just getting started with students and you wanna teach them the basics of driving the robot around, you'll see that it opens right in the software. They can make it full screen. A lot of students pre prefer to keep it shrunk down because they can actually follow along with the tutorial. And what's great is they're all about a minute long. So they're really targeted. It's not something long where the students are gonna get bored. 51 seconds to teach them what they need to know and they're off and driving. Uh, of course, we can save the project. So we need to name it. And once we rename it, now when we save it, it'll save as Dean's code. Um, there are a number of different playgrounds. So I've already shown you the grid map. So this is the one I usually start students with. And we just do something simple like this, get the robot driving around, getting it moving in a square and teach them the basics, drive forward, turn left, turn right, drive reverse. Once they've got to that, we can dive into one of my favorites, which is the wall maze. So again, student engagement, give them a challenge. So this is a three dimensional maze with walls that they cannot drive through even though they will try and they've got to code their robot. And it's simple, they literally can code their robot using drive forward, turn left, turn right and code their robot to go all through the maze to the finish line. You can also give them an added challenge and you can throw in, okay, uh, I want you to go to the number two, then the letter D and then to the finish. So again, uh, it's not gonna get stale. For the students that are done quick, you can give them extra challenges to add in. Um, there is the disc mover. This one here, those uh, blue and red and green circles are actually virtual magnetic discs. So the idea here is the students use the robot to drive it up, energize the electromagnet, picks it up, bring it back to the box, de-energize the magnet and it drops it. So now they're using it for more of an automation. You know, I call this the Amazon challenge where they've got to go and get the packages and get them back to the loading dock. Once they've got this down pat, and I usually do this with my students, uh, they can move to the disc transport, where now what we have is we've got a castle with a courtyard and a wall in the way. 
The discs are no longer right in front of them. Great challenge for them to go and get the right discs and bring them back. Probably the favorite for all students, let me just modify this, is this one. And this is called Castle Crasher because they actually get to crash things. So you can actually knock over the different parts. And for those of you that have cats, you can push everything over the edge. So uh, including the robot, so you have to be careful. So this is a great one for students to get started again, working with sensors, because you will notice there's a red border all the way around. So what I do with this is I teach students how to do an algorithm. I was fortunate enough to team up with a school board last year and I went in and taught, I think I ended up teaching 60 classes with their actual students. So I went in and taught them for this one, how to do an algorithm where the robot would autonomously drive around, find objects and push them off the edge without the robot falling off the edge. We had a lot of fun. So again, there are a lot of different uh, playgrounds, as you can see from the list, and different things to do. And Vex has gone ahead and made some activities. Um, Sarah, did my screen change, or are you still looking at the Vex code? I never know. It's, it's computer science now. Oh, perfect. I got it right for once. Yay for me. Mm -hmm. So what Vex gives you is a whole bunch of different lessons here. So let's take a look at one we've already looked at. Crash the castle or disc mover. So for instance, disc mover, um, they give you the challenge, but what's great about it is they always give you three levels. So level one is pick up and place three discs of any color and any colored goals. Really simple. Level two is one disc of each color. Level three is uh, one disc of each color inside each colored goal. So we know we've got students that love coding and there's probably some students that don't quite love coding as much as I do. So some students will, you know, finish level one and say, I've done it. There's other students that will say level one was great. All right, where's level two? Where's level three? So this has already been done for you. There's all the different exercises here. And what's great is you'll notice this is a Google Doc. So these do open in Google Docs, meaning that you can just go to file, make a copy, change anything you want or not, and be able to give it to students. So if we do end up uh, in lockdowns, or if you've got certain parts of your school, certain cohorts that maybe are home for 14 days, this is an amazing resource for your teachers because they can teach robotics and coding remotely. Uh, this is a website, vr.vex.com. It is 100% free of charge. There's no logins. There's no access. Anybody in the entire world with a browser can log in and start coding robots here. Any questions about VEX VR or about the VEX code coding platform? Just thank no you. questions for me. Yeah, uh, in terms of accounts, uh, does the teacher create student accounts or the students create their own accounts? There's no accounts whatsoever. VEX made sure that this was complete open access. So for students to submit work, um, it's not cloud-based. So if I go file, save to my device, it'll actually save it onto my device. And then I would have to upload that. I don't know if you use Google Classroom or D2L or... We're mostly Google Classroom, but we have, yeah, the D2L as well. Right. Okay. James, good to see you. I noticed in the chat that you got to run. Uh, all As always, James, reach out if you have any questions. It was great to see you again. So what I did when I worked with my students, because when we had the year of COVID, I couldn't run my team. So what I did is I had my students submit three items for me. Um, they can submit the code. The downfall to that is because it's a website, I actually have to go to Google Classroom, download the code to my computer and upload it into the website to get it to run. So what I would do is I would get my students to run their code and then send me a screenshot. So in this case, you know, if I gave them the task of knocking over five buildings, they would send me a screenshot where, hey, yes, five buildings are knocked over. And there's also this share button up here, which is grossly mislabeled. It looks like a share where I can send it to Facebook or Google. It's not. What it does is it actually just creates a PDF of the actual code. Um, so it'll look like this. It's basically a, just a PDF of the code. So what I would do is I would get the students to send me the actual code just in case I wanted to audit it. But for most parts, I would look at the screenshot, which opens in Google Classroom. The PDF opens in Google Classroom and just say, yeah, code looks good, commenting's there, yes, they're done, and then be able to mark them. So it was really, really easy to work with this and Google Classroom. And again, they can log, there's no login. So they can sign in from home. They can sign in at school. The only thing they have to do is 
they have, if they're working on a project and they want to take it home, they've got to put it in their Google Classroom so that they've got access from both, or sorry, in their Google Drive. Is that what you needed, Louise? Yep. Yep. Thanks. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, Vex thought about having it cloud based, etc. But as soon as you start dealing with logins and with Vex being a US company, we run into all sorts of issues where who's storing data, what data are they collecting. So when Vex came out with this, they said, you know what, we're going to leave it wide open, and anybody can use it. And that really has been a blessing, especially during COVID. So as I mentioned, all of the coding platforms look the same. You've got all of the same control structures, et cetera. Obviously, as you progress through the robotics, you're going to get some more sensors and things like that. But in all of the platforms, you can use drive forward, turn left, turn right. And in seconds, not even minutes, students can have robots driving around, whether it's the VEX 1, 2, 3, or all the way up to the V5 or the work cell. So next, we are going to look at the STEM labs. Uh, is there any particular one you want me to go through? Uh, currently, we only have the VEX IQ. So we'll oh, be looking perfect. at that. We also have to go soon because we, uh, Katie and I are doing a presentation at 3.30. So we, we just um, need some time to. OK, I will wrap this up quickly. Okay. Uh, so VEX IQ is probably my favorite STEM labs. Uh, I'll go through quickly. There is a teacher's portal you'll want to sign up. It's got pacing guides. So rather than you choosing which lessons you're going to do, it opens up, actually, I can open it. It opens up in an Excel, a Google Docs spreadsheet. And mm -hmm. you'll notice at the bottom, there's a six week, nine week, 12 week and 18 week. So you can even drill it down and it'll tell you what okay. order to run which lessons in. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the material list. So it'll make sure that you have everything you need. Uh, there's marking rubrics, which are fantastic. So you've got that taken care of. Checklists, a uh, letter slash email home that can explain what you're teaching, et cetera. Could what put I that love... link in the chat, please? Uh, yep, absolutely. Thanks. You may need to sign up for an account for that at okay. VEX. It is a free account. Okay. Uh, let me dive back. One of the things I love about VEX, and especially if we're in a year Oh, they've got all the new VEX V2. So this is getting packed with a whole bunch of new lessons. Probably my favorite lesson is tallest tower. Because what you do here, how do I get to it? Come on. All right, I'll go back. There we go. So what we do with tallest tower is we don't actually use the VEX to build the tower. We use the VEX kit to build an earthquake platform. So Louise, if you're looking at what are we going to do with all these kits we've got around here? How do I bring them in the classroom? They build an earthquake platform and then the students can build a tower, whether they build it out of popsicle sticks, uh, recycling materials, tape, what it doesn't matter. They build a tower. When I had my students do it, I had a minimum that the tower had to be two feet tall and they had to attach a tennis ball to the top. So the tennis ball was the weight and then you put it on the earthquake platform and you slowly increase the intensity to see if it can withstand an earthquake which intensity and for how long so this is a great idea on how you can bring vex into the classroom uh, even if you've only got one kit that's all you need and you can do the whole classroom and as you can see there's student and teacher we'll just hop into the student section so again make the tallest tower that can stand an earthquake I'm going to go through rather quickly. So it goes through the entire build. Whoops. There we go. Then it does have lessons. So it talks about reinforcing and bracing structures. It talks about improving your design, right? The three little pigs. Um, I just want to get through. And then it talks about real world. So it talks about San Francisco and it talks about how they actually build their buildings with isolation structures underneath them so that the buildings aren't going to move when there's an earthquake. So again, real world, uh, great for science classes and a great way to bring the kits into the classroom. So the STEM labs, I will put a link to the STEM labs as well in the chat. Let me see why it won't let me out of here. There we go. STEM labs, I'll give you a link to the IQ ones. And again, these are free of charge as well. There's no login except for the teacher's portal, obviously to keep the students out, but there's a whole bunch of lesson plans and fun stuff that you can bring the kids right into the classroom. All right, so I'm gonna dive back into the presentation just to finish up. 
Stop sharing. Here we go. Share the screen. And here we go. All right. So once again, Vexcode VR is completely web-based, no downloads. That's why we love it. That's the virtual edition. Uh, I don't know if you were here, Louise, when I was talking about the new Vex PD. So this is something that maybe somebody as yourself at the board level would be interested in because it gives you uh, some extra resources for all of the different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a annual Vex Educators Conference held at Vex Worlds. There's uh, a portal where you can actually inter uh, interact with Vex developers and engineers if you have questions, as well as all sorts of different classes and learning. Why VEX student engagement? And you know yourself, Louise, if you've ever seen VEX IQ or VEX IQ events, how much the students get into it. 82% uh, of teachers agreed that participation in the VEX robotics competitions made students more interested in school or education. Uh, I ran a VEX robotics club and I had parents come out tell me that Monday night, you know, Mondays was their kids' favorite day of the week because they got to come to robotics. I used to run my program on Mondays because I didn't have a lot of training. Uh, flexibility, VEX can be used for competitions or classroom, or now with the VEX Go, uh, it can be used for both because it's a classroom competition. Uh, what's great is it brings different uh, demographics of students together. We've got builders, drivers, coders, all coming together to form a team. Uh, one of the favorite things I love from VEX is hands-on, minds-on, and it's really true that students need that experiential experience where they're actually building something hands-on. It's one thing to watch a video, uh, you know, or learn about something from a textbook when you can actually do it hands-on uh, and build, create, and explore. It really brings the lessons home. How can we support you? So as I mentioned, we have our own in-house training program uh, to date. Uh, 237 teachers and coaches and over 1,500 students. Um, I'll click to the next slide. This is the one where I became Twitter famous. So as you can see, we've run quite a few different uh, lessons, some with the V5, some with the VR, some with the IQ. We do offer training sessions for teachers and teachers and students for all the product lineups. And these are a really good kickstart. So especially if uh, you're bringing your program out, uh, you want to bring something in, it's a great way because I work with the teachers to show them one, how the product works, but two, the easiest way to bring it right into the classroom and have a great successful year. No previous experience required. Uh, I've taught teachers that uh, have never done any coding, robotics, never built a robot. And within three to four hours, we've got them building a robot and driving it around, coding it, and ready and excited to bring it into the classroom. How am I doing for time? Almost there. Uh, why I design? We've got 21 years of service in the industry, and we are we're an educational reseller. It's all we do. So we work with schools to bring programs, robotics, STEM, etc., to the students. So in summary, why is VEX so amazing? Solutions for every grade. Um, yeah. Cause you sell the Dremel 3D printer as well, right? Yes, we do. And do you offer coaching for that? Um, that's a good question. We probably could. I know we've got a couple of them in the US office. Um, we have sold a large number of them. Um, they are very much plug and play. Mm -hmm. We haven't really had any issues where teachers, you know, it's a little different than something like the MakerBot printers we sell because you actually have to use um, Cura, which is very simple to use. And then you've got to load your print onto a USB or a SD card, plug mm -hmm. it in the printer and then print it. But yeah, that's absolutely something that we could definitely work with and put a program together and you know, yes. if that's something you wanted to bring in. Because we have one and uh, like my colleague is getting started and it's his first time with 3D printer. So I was just wondering if he might be able to reach out. Yeah, if it's just one teacher and they just want a little bit of help, by all means, just send them my email and I can pop into a Zoom meeting like this whenever it's good for them. And yeah. we can just go through and have a little bit of fun. I love 3D printing. Yeah, yeah. And Perfect. Thanks. So that is the end of our presentation. So I'm gonna open Thank it up for any questions and answers. I know we're short on time, so I will not be offended if you've got to go. Oh, okay. Thank you very much.
it's nice to see the new um like the the thing the new robots that fill the gaps of yes uh, age groups yeah. yep absolutely and to have fun with them i mean i was really yeah. impressed especially with this one two three uh when we first saw it we named it the puck because yeah. i thought like, it's just a little hockey puck what's it gonna do and then yeah. you know once i got to actually play with it and experience it it's a lot of fun uh, and I think it's going to be a great product and it's priced a lot better. I don't know if you uh, use Ozobots in your system. That was we probably- do, our... but that, this would be more similar to the Bbot. Right, yeah. exactly. Which are also quite pricey, but- um, Yeah. And what's the Ozo... distance that it travels? Um, Like for one unit? One, for one unit, yes. Yeah. Because one like the, the Bbot yeah. travels 15 centimeters and then the mouse code and go travels three inches. Well, does it- Oh, I thought it was 12. Ah, okay. I'm not exactly sure because I don't have the actual field to measure, but it is, I would say it's probably, it's probably going to be in inches because it's vet. So it's probably four inches. Yeah. Uh, which works it's out always funny when it's in inches. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hopefully I hope it's four inches because that's about as close to hundred millimeters as you're going to get. Yeah. So at least, or 10 centimeters. So at least we can kind of work with it that way. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, how, how is it priced for one? Oh, that's a great question. Let me just dive in. Um, we were really shocked. Ozobot put two price increases through last year, which really priced themselves out of the market. We were really there, shocked. Like, yeah, when they changed to the Evo, so it's different than the Ozobot bit, but they don't do the same thing as the, this one is more like a B-Bot. That's right. So these are one thirty nine ninety nine individually. Okay. Or you can purchase them in bundles where you get the packages, the field, okay. etc. So it's similarly priced to the B bot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the, the mouse code and go is less expensive, but it's also less durable. It's not meant for the classroom. Right. It's the B bot. Yeah, and I mean you know Vex well enough to know that they made this thing with the drop test, so it's durable. Yeah. Uh, it's really unique. Like when you want to erase your code, you just shake it. <laughs> it's really you know really unique and, and uh student friendly so yes. i think they did a great job and then to get it going you sit on your desk and just give it a little roll and it lights up so it auto shuts off so you're not draining yeah. the battery yes. uh rechargeable of course so yeah it's uh it's been a great product okay. well thank you so much for your time no problem it's great to see you both and uh we hopefully we'll see you again at a different webinar. And again, if there's anything that you want to know about, by all means, reach out and I'm happy to hop into a quick meeting. We can show yeah. you different products, uh, whether it's 3D printing, whether it's robotics, VEX, whatever. Yeah, I'll tell Kurt that it's a possibility. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.